Welcome to Agent Noob everyone, and let's explore the current available modding tools in Age of Empires 4 and what we can potentially work with once it's released to the public in the spring update. The essence editor shows a lot of promise, but let's tackle it one at a time. Let's dive right in. Alright, there's a lot to cover here, so we'll start with the basics first. Everyone who purchased the game on Steam can technically access the Essence Editor between March 10th and March 18th. All you have to do is opt into the public preview beta, and you'll find the Essence Editor executable in the main folder of the game files. It's also called Content Editor by the way, so know that both of them are just the same tool. In theory, we should all regain access to it after the spring update goes live. Now, using the aforementioned tool, we can create four different types of mods for now. Created maps, generated maps, tuning packs, and game modes. There's also technically an option called Empty Extension, which is described as creating a mod with no content for expert mod makers who want to start from scratch, but I'll get to that in a second. Alright, let's start with Crafted Maps. Crafted Maps are technically the closest thing we have right now to a scenario editor we've had in previous games. The premise of this is to create maps that look exactly the same every time it is played, so it's mostly meant for maps like Forest Nothing, Michis, and so on where randomization is simply not required. It's obviously also for creating scenarios with triggers and other cool stuff the community has been doing in previous AoE games for years. One nice thing about this tool is that it gives you the option to select a template to work with, so you can select beginner, intermediate, and expert depending on how comfortable you are with the tool. For example, if you click on beginner, you'll be able to select the biome and dry arabia as an example for your template, then begin working on it from there rather than starting from scratch. I will also talk about the overall UI later in this video, so sit tight. Generated maps are essentially what RMS files were for Age of Empires 2. They're meant to be scripts that generate a unique, randomized map based on the parameters set. So yes, most of the games that we play in Age of Empires 4 are generated maps, as the random spawning of resources is an important aspect of keeping the game fresh in the Age of Empires franchise. Obviously, generated maps are for more advanced users and scripters. You can still choose between a basic and advanced template, but you'll be greeted with a large block of code regardless. There are lots of developer comments in green, so these should prove really helpful for folks when they first begin working on these scripts. There aren't many instructions provided to us just yet, as the developers mentioned in their website that it's coming soon. Regardless, the comments in green should be a good starting point for enthusiasts for the time being. For example, someone already recreated the Four Lakes map from Age of Empires 2, so it's only a matter of time that we get some famous Age of Empires maps in a map pack once the tools are live. Next up is Tuning Packs. You've already seen me utilize or mention these already in a previous video, but they're essentially the data packs as they were called in Age of Empires 2. You can modify unit cost, stats, base damage, AoE damage, bonus damage, weapons, line of sight, animation time including wind up and wind down time, and a whole slew of other things here. Also, to refer back to my Forest Nothing video I posted yesterday, I mentioned that someone will have to make a tuning pack to allow markets to be built in the Dark Age to allow all civilizations to age up in that map, and, well, someone already made it the very next day. And finally, game modes. Based on what the developers say, this is the most powerful way to alter the way the game is played through changing victory conditions, game behavior, match dynamics, and other central elements to how the game usually works. Technically, we should be able to make mini games like CBA or Micromania based on what they mention. Making mods here obviously requires some expert scripting, so you'll need to know what you're doing. Alright, now that we've covered the fundamentals of what can be done with the Essence Editor, here's a quick overview of what it looks like in the game. Mods is one of the main sections of the top navigation bar when you're first created to the game. You'll then see a summary page of some mods to the right and two buttons to access all mods and your mods specifically. The UI is actually pretty good for once, as it's comfortable to browse the mods and get a glance of what they are. Much, much better than the UI in Age of Empires 2. You can also filter on just tuning packs, generated maps, crafted maps, and game modes to look for just the mods that you're interested in, and you can sort by a few categories as well. The simplicity of opening a mod, subscribing to it, and rating it on the same page is also refreshing. You can rate a mod from 1 star to 5 stars which is also fantastic to see, as looking at the high aggregate scores should help us filter through all the trash. There are a few criticisms or improvements I'd suggest though. First of all, we need a toggle or a button to filter on official mods. This way, folks will be able to see them quickly and add them right away. For example, I shouldn't have to go through a whole bunch of mods just to find the official Royal Rumble mod. Second, there needs to be some quality checklist of some sort with an option to filter on it. For example, in a short few days with relatively gated access, the mods page is already filled with a whole bunch of junk. There's a mod called Supermads, all lowercase, with A-S-D-F-A-S-F-A-S-D-F-D -S 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 -D -D in the description and nothing else. An easy checklist would be something like a proper image uploaded with some coherent sentences written in the description. When the mods page floods with junk in the spring update and becomes a cesspool, we need a way to discover new, well-made mods that haven't been rated yet without going through pages of garbage. Obviously, this is a tad nitpicking, but this is a quality of life feature that will save us all some time. 
That said, there's thankfully a proper mod manager that you can access as well. In this list, you can see all of your local and published slash subscribed mods you currently have. You can easily toggle them on and off without having to unsubscribe and resubscribe every time. There's also a trash icon to the right that allows you to unsubscribe and a clear priority list as well. What's also a great UI feature is that hovering on the small info icon next to the mod name displays a mini pop-up with the image of the mod alongside its description just in case you forget what the mod did. This is the level of polish that we want Relic to adhere to throughout the game. The only criticism that I must mention is the fact that we cannot drag and drop mods to change their priority. We have to use the arrows to the right and it's very annoying to have to click so many times just to move a new mod from the lowest priority to the highest. It's not the end of the world but it's just an annoying UX oversight. And finally, publishing the mods you make is very easy. Once you build your mod and have the essence editor do its magic, you should see your mod under the mod manager as local status in the orange color. You can then simply go to mod publisher, click on the mod that you want to publish, then click publish. That's pretty much it. All right, before we wrap up, there are three things I want to mention. One, the essence editor is by no means a scenario editor. In theory, it is more powerful than the in-game scenario editor that we're used to in previous Age of Empires games, but it comes at the cost of accessibility. It will take me a while to get used to where things are and how to create simple maps with simple test case scenarios that I might want a quick answer to, and this is coming from someone who uses this type of tools a lot. For example, in Age of Empires 2, I can very easily put 30 knights and 20 camels just to see the result very quickly within 60 seconds. Fooling around and building stuff is so easy and intuitive that, quite frankly, anyone can pick it up and do it themselves. The essence editor on the other hand will be intimidating for the majority of the players. Hence, while having this tool is absolutely awesome and some of us will take full advantage of it, Relic definitely needs to add a scenario editor in-game so all players can take advantage of it and test things to their heart's content without having to fiddle around with a new tool externally. Although this is not mentioned anywhere, fingers crossed that they'll add it sometime. The second point I wanted to make is the viability of the mods across all game modes. For example, some folks were already able to figure out replacing in-game icons, but not for all game modes. So we can technically work on in-game icons by making a tuning pack, but it'll only work in custom lobbies in which we can change tuning packs, but not for matchmaking of any sort. If we can get some sort of access to alter game assets to be displayed across the board from ranked games to custom lobbies, or apply tuning packs, at least cosmetic ones for matchmaking as well, that would be awesome. Hopefully the developers will allow us to do that soon, and when applying those changes universally is doable, we can begin our icon revamp project that I talked about months ago. In fact, I will be making a video regarding the icon project soon to launch it regardless, as I'd rather have the icons ready to go as soon as the mod is viable to be built for the game. Hence, if you're one of those designers who did comment on that video months ago that you'd like to help, stay tuned for an upcoming project video on this matter. And third, we currently do not know the full capability of the Essence Editor just yet, as some geniuses amongst us might be able to figure out further modding the game using the empty extension feature and get lots of stuff done. Only time will tell what type of additional mods the community will be able to build, so we'll see once the spring update rolls out and whether or not Relic will allow further implementation on mods throughout the game. Well, that should cover all of the fundamentals for modding in Age of Empires 4. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on any future Age of Empires content. I'm already pleased with what people can do in just a matter of days, so I'm sure that we'll see some awesome mods pop up after the spring update. Here's to hope that Relic supports asset altering in the game for us to make some substantial changes to the UI, icons, and perhaps even in-game assets. I'll also link below the official modding instructions from the developers for you to get started in case you're interested, as well as a Discord community currently dedicated to modding Age of Empires 4. As always, thanks for watching everyone, be sure to support our modding projects in the upcoming months, and see you all in the next one. Thank you.